Today we're going to be coding a solution for lead code problem 69. One thing that I can notice is that Amazon really likes to give this binary search in the coding interviews. The catch is that in any number we can use binary search because there is no interval where this number is actually going to be growing downwards. It's always going to go up. So 1, 2 and back to 16, meaning that we can definitely divide. Welcome everyone, today we're doing problem 69 squared x. This is a problem given by Amazon in a coding interview. And today we're going to be coding the solution in C sharp. Given a non-negative integer x, compute and return the square root of x. Since the return type is integer, decimal digits are truncated. All right, and here we need to do this without using the math library. So the catch here is that whenever you actually have a number, let's say positive number, 16 or even negative, you are always guaranteed to have an interval where this number is actually going to grow. So I'm gonna go one, two, and all the way to 16. And if you think about it, if I divide this interval to two, I'm gonna get eight. And this is definitely going to have bigger numbers on the right and lower numbers on the left. So obviously there is this great way where, where we can actually use binary search here. And it's pretty genius actually, if you think about it, it's hard to come up with the idea that you can use binary search in a number, but once you actually do, it's pretty simple. So let's actually see it in code. The whole idea is going to be us taking a number and checking if this number multiplied by itself, because this is not using a math library like power or square root, we can see if eight multiplied by eight is going to be equal to 64, uh, not 64, 16. And we're gonna be seeing that this is equal to 64. So 64 is not equal to 16, that's why I am going to go down. And here's the, the genius part, I'm just going to go down because I know that whenever I have something less than eight, I'm actually going to produce less of a number than I produced with eight. Meaning that if I take half of eight and I'm taking four, four multiplied by itself is guaranteed to be less than eight multiplied by itself because of this interval. We're always going up, we're not going down. So now I'm going to check four multiplied by four, and this is going to be equal to 16. And I need to keep a best variable, best choice, because we're not always guaranteed that we're gonna be equal to 16. We want to go up or down. Let's say that we went to two, and I'm gonna multiply two by two. I'm gonna end up with a four. Four, however, is less than 16. And that's why I would like to go with something bigger than two. I would go to the right interval, and I will take three. 3 multiplied by itself is going to be equal to 9. Still, not the number that I'm searching for, meaning that I am going to need to go higher into the interval. So let's see this in code. All right, let's see how is this going to play out. The first thing that I want to do is to say if the target value is actually equal to 1, I'm going to be returning 1, simply because 1 multiplied by itself is always going to give itself. So we are doing this with a check here. We don't need to go down. Now, in order for us to prepare for binary search, we are going to need to create two variables. I call them low and high. You're going to see other YouTubers calling them left and right. It doesn't really matter. All you really need to know is this is going to be the starter and this is going to be the end. So this is going to be high. And I'm going to say target value. Now, if you imagine what I have been explaining with the pen, if you have skipped that, I'm just gonna write it here. You're going to see that 16 may be represented as an array of continuous growing numbers. And you can see this here. Now, whenever I actually have a number, I know that everything from this number is going to be bigger than itself. From this number to the right, it's going to be bigger than itself and so on and so forth. Usually binary search may be used only with the array where we have continuous growing numbers but here we have a target value of 16 and numbers are continuous growing by definition so if i'm taking half of this it's going to be eight and now i know that if i'm taking half between this again i'm going to get either something bigger than eight or something smaller and this is here the ingenious thing that you need to think target value when we, have, when we don't have an array, you can either do it as an array if you want, but target values and integers can be represented with binary search. Whatever I'm going to do, 
However, I'm going to end up with a number and this number needs to be an int. Now it's not always going to be an int. As you can see here, the square root is 2.82842. So I'm just going to create a best choice variable just to hold my previously found choice. That's something that I want to do since if I have found the best variation. So for example, here I found that uh, four multiplied by itself gives 16. That's what I want. And next I move, let's say to six to search for something better. I'm not going to lose this four that I had. So that's the best choice that I'm going to be returning as a result. Now, in order for us to actually perform binary search, it's always the same. You're going to do a while loop and you're going to say while the low or left or start, doesn't matter how you call it, is less than high. You're just going to now take the middle values. In order for us to take the middle values, you're going to see middle value is going to be equal to low plus high. And I'm going to be dividing this by two. And you can see that when I have, let's say, a target value of 16 or 15 or 14, I am going to say low, which is going to be zero in our case, plus 14 divided by two is going to give us seven. So obviously the half of the 14 array that I mentioned is going to be seven. Now I'm going to check if the previous best is actually equal to middle value. And if that is the case, I'm just going to return the previous best because I do not want to spend any more time searching for it since I have already found it. Next, I'm going to do a helper checker and I'm going to say, middle value here and the target value. Now this is something very important. I'm going to go down to create the function and I'm going to do this. All right. So this one was performed in an if, so that means that it needs to return a boo and it's called helper checker. Now I'm going to place value and a target and I need to know if my value is actually good. And what do we mean by good? Now, if I, place five and I'm searching for the square root of 16. This is not good because five multiplied by itself is going to give me 25. So this is not anywhere near 16. I'm searching for something that's going to be less or equal than 16. In order for me to do that, I'm just going to check if value multiplied by value is less or equal than the target. And there's something else. And keep in mind, we're not using the math library here. These are not breaking the rules because uh, we cannot do power or power. So we cannot just place anything by itself using the help of the, these math functions over here. So we're not using them and we're good. Now, if value multiplied by value is less than or equal than target, and I need to make sure that the value is going to be less or equal than 4, 6, 3, 4, 0. Oh. And if I say 4, 6, 3, 4, 0 oh, multiplied by 4, 6, 3, 4, 0, oh, you're going to see that this is going to be very close to an int overflow. I want to make sure that this is not going to happen to me. And that is why I'm going to say, okay, either less or equal than this number. If that is the case, I'm going to be returning true or else I'm going to be returning false, of course. Good. The helper checker function is written. So let's go back up and we're going to say, if this enters, it means that we have found a valid and adequate number. If I have found an adequate number, obviously I want to keep it into the best choice. And I'm going to say best choice is going to be equal to middle value. Now, something important here is that we want to go up because we want to go up because we now know that there is something that's either less or equal than the middle value, but we do not know. And that's why I'm just going to go up just to be sure that we don't have any better options. Low is going to be equal to middle value plus one. And obviously, if I want to decrement my array or my range, I'm going to say high is going to be equal to middle value. And finally, I'm just going to be turning best choice. All right, I am currently submitting this. Let's see if we can make it once. As you can see, I have recorded this once and we have a compile error. Great. Previous best. It's best choice. I don't know why I said previous best. Good. Let's submit it now. And I'm going to explain this thing here. I'm going to write it down. And where is the problem now? <laughs> Target value, come on. All right, I'm going to just run code because I have a lot of errors now. Just want to make sure that everything is working properly. All right, good. Let's submit it now. And the final part that we need to be talking about is, of course, time complexity about that. All right, as you can see, very good space and very poor time. So I'm going to run it again 
don't ever look at these numbers because they're just not going to show you the adequate numbers. All right, so I'm going to delete this now. And actually, I need to keep it. I need to keep it so we can see this thing over here. All right, I'm just going to keep it. And now I'm going to explain this bit of code because I think that this is most most difficult part. Now, whenever I have a range, and let's say that I have one, two, three, four, and five, so I'm gonna write it down, you are going to divide this low, so low border, or left and right. Let's say left and right. And I'm gonna add them and divide it by two. This is obviously going to get me three here. And if I want to find a number bigger than three, I know that this here to the right, is holding numbers which are going to be bigger than three, and this on the left is going to be holding numbers which are smaller than three. So in order for me to find a number bigger than the current number, which is going to be, by the way, mid, the mid value, I need to increment my left pointer. I need to put it right over here, right? And this is going to give me middle value is going to be equal to left plus right, and this is going, going to give me this range over here, so four and five, and obviously I'm going to divide it by two to give me the mid, and this is going to be four. Then we're just going to take low here, and we're going to increment it over here, and finally we're going to be finding five, if that is what we want. If, however, we want to go down, and let's say that I am searching for the number two, all right, Sorry for that. Let's say that I uh, want to go down because I'm searching for the number two. Whenever I have low here, high here, and mid, right? In order for me to go down to this range, I need to decrement high. Because I cannot just put low over here because this is going to give me this range. I want to put high over here so it gives me this range. Because the range is always between left and right, low and high, or start and end. And that's pretty much it. So the final part is talking about space. The space complexity, as you can, as you could see here with uh, beating 99% of whatever, you're going to notice that it is actually constant. We're not using absolutely anything. We're not creating an array. We're not creating a string. We're just doing some mathematics over here. And that's pretty much it. Time complexity is interesting and different. It's going to be log n. Before I actually panic and close this video, I'm going to explain to you what log n means. If I'm searching for the, let's say search, and I'm gonna be searching for 85. 85 is going to be the number that I'm searching in an array with one, two, hundred elements. How are you gonna perform this task? Well, obviously you can start from left and go to right. And each step of the way, you're going to check if the number you're at is actually 85. And at the 85 iteration, you're obviously going to get at the number 85. So you are using 85 iterations, which is going to be obviously linear. Because if you're searching for the 100 elements, you're going to use 100 iterations. Now, if I'm having something that's going to be log n, this means that every single time I'm searching less and less between the array. And that's what we do with binary search. If I have one, 200 elements, and let's say that I'm searching for the number 85 again. Yeah, let's make it 85 again, just to make it universal. I am going to, first of all, say low border plus high divided by two, and this is going to give me 50. It's going to give me 50 because low is not one, it's actually zero, but that's how I wrote it. It's going to give me 50. Now I know that everything on the right side of 50 is going to be bigger than 50. So I do not bother to actually search this thing over here. I'm taking this range. The range that I'm gonna be working now is from 50 to 100. I'm going to take the middle again, and this is going to be, let's say 80. And now I'm going to search this range because I'm searching for 85. And you can see that in around six iterations, we're actually getting the same result as this search. So here we have six iterations. And as you, as you can see, this is quite better than this. So that's pretty much it. Time complexity is logarithmic and of course, constant space. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.